Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So the Windows 11 drama continues to unfold. Microsoft are being unrepentant about their requirements of using an eighth generation Intel processor to run Windows 11, but yet it's removed the checker tool from its website because it doesn't like the results that it's getting from people. So there's more to this than meets the eye. If you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so this video really is a follow-on from yesterday's video where I point out that probably you won't be able to run Windows 11. In fact, reading the comments, and there are literally thousands of them, there are lots and lots of people who have very good high-performing systems with, let's say, an Intel uh, i7 7th generation processor, lots of memory, and now they are finding out they won't be able to upgrade to Windows 11. People who've recently bought machines either refurbished second hand or maybe even a brand new but with an older processor and they're finding out they won't be able to run windows 11 this is not going well for microsoft and because of that as a result microsoft has been trying to push uh, its agenda forward and it's been publishing uh, different statements saying what it's trying to do but it's still not being very transparent because it's now said oh well we didn't realize that you'd actually use the checker tool we didn't realize you'd actually check to see with your system and then you would actually be upset if you found out you couldn't so they've removed the checker tool we've removed the checker tool because they want to improve it to make it better What's actually, of course, happening is that there's lots of feedback, lots of negative feedback coming in Microsoft's way, and they want to try to stop that, first of all, by removing the checker tool. So let's have a look at the new information that Microsoft has published. Now, basically, Microsoft is still going on the lines of security. Security, security, security. Now, that's fine because one of the jokes about Windows, of course, is the amount of malware viruses that exist for Windows. And we want to do absolutely everything we can to improve that situation. And there are lots of hardware features, including TPM and Secure Boot and UEFI and so on and so on, that are important for making security better. I'm all for that. I understand that 100%. However, as I said in yesterday's video, it seems that Microsoft have drawn an arbitrary line across in the sand and said, if you've got this processor, you're okay. If you've got this processor, you're not okay. But yet when I've been looking at the security features available on those different processors, they look exactly the same. More about that in a moment. Now, what Microsoft is saying is trying to use a virtualization-based security, VBS. And the idea is that some parts of the operating system can be put in a small hypervisor, that's kind of a, a virtual machine running inside of the operating system, so that the data in there is protected from any malware that might be got its way onto the main system. And to do that, it needs some hardware support that stops the malware accessing the memory that can be used by uh, the, the hypervisor. And that's absolutely fine. So there's a whole document from 2017 okay, that describes the ideas of virtualization-based security. And the bottom line is what you need is something that supports hypervisor. It needs to be able to support uh, VTX, as it is, for example, uh, on Intel, and a few other uh, extensions. Now, I've been looking at those processors that Intel have made and looking at which ones support these different features according to that VBS document from 2017. And the point, as far as I can see, is that if you go back even as far as a sixth generation uh, core, uh, Intel Core CPU, you still get the same protection. Here's, I've done a little table. So Microsoft is saying it supports the eighth generation of uh, Intel processors, the i5s. So I've got here the i5-8500. It supports VTX, it supports VTD, it supports extended page table. That's one of the things that's needed by uh, VBS. That's okay, 64-bit instructions. It's also got all these other things it supports. OS guard, trusted execution, execution bit disabled. It's got memory protection extensions. It's got all these stuff and they're all supported. You say, great, well done, Microsoft. You can now build a better operating system on that. But of course, as you can see here on the table, the i5-7500 supports exactly the same range of features. If you look at the i5-6500, it supports exactly the same range of features. So really, Microsoft are saying, yes, it's because of security. You need to be able to do VBS, which means you need to be able to have VTX and all this other stuff. Yeah, okay, great, fine, absolutely great, more security. But what about the seventh generation? That supports the same functionality. What about the sixth generation? That supports the same functionality. Why have you drawn this line in the sand saying, oh, but it's going to be an eighth generation uh, Intel 
core processor. Why? What, what, why do that? And I've also added to the table here the i5 4400 was the closest one I could kind of five to those other ones. And yes, here I can see it doesn't support the Intel trusted execution technology. It doesn't support uh, SGX, doesn't support MPX. So you could say, okay, here is a reasonable cutoff because we're actually gonna use these security features and we want those security features to be in our new product. That could be a good argument, but in Microsoft are not making that argument. And that's part of the poor thing that's going on here. Microsoft are not making an argument about why they're doing things. They're just kind of saying, this is it. And then when they realize that people actually use their products, when they realize that actually people depend on their products, when they realize that every single day there are people who boot up a PC and they make their living on it. There are people that boot up a PC and they do games on it. There are people that do boot up a PC and they do online schooling with it. And Microsoft are not are just ignoring the fact that they have invested time, money, and effort, and they've got this machine and they're running it. And Microsoft are just saying, well, we don't care about you. One other interesting thing that Microsoft said in this latest blog post was that it will see what the user expects experiences like for people with uh, Intel Core seventh generation processors and people with original Ryzen processors. So that's with the Zen microarchitecture. And if the experience is okay, then they will extend the number of processors that are supported. This just proves that this is just an arbitrary thing that they've done. They've just drawn this line and said, oh, we're just gonna support that. We can't be bothered to support old stuff, so we're just gonna draw a line. But yet the features, as I've already shown you, the security features are already there, just Microsoft don't wanna support it and follow the money was what someone said in one of the comments. As I said, they're really only interested in new PCs because new PCs is where they get their money and that's where they are trying to expand their user base. Buy a new PC, buy a Microsoft laptop even, but you can't be guaranteed that will support Windows 12, of course, because if you've got a Surface Pro 4 like me, that doesn't support Windows 11. So you can't even guarantee if you buy a Microsoft piece of kit, it's gonna support the things. Ah, this is just such a drama. So I want to address a couple of other things in the comments, a lot of the comments that were made in my previous video. One is that some people are saying they've managed to install uh, the developer inside preview on a PC that's not supported according to the checker tool. So for example, I just had a message from somebody that said they've installed it on a Surface Pro 4, which Microsoft has clearly said will not support Windows 11. And of course that's normal, these insider developer builds will support a much greater range of hardware. But there will come a cutoff point where when Microsoft in, uh, actually insists on these features or insists on the CPU support, then you won't be able to go any further with those preview builds. In fact, the day will come when Windows 11 will be released. This is assuming nothing changes with what Microsoft is saying, which is all based on what they're saying today, of course. But the actual final release will come out and you won't be able to upgrade to it. So you'll be stuck on the insider last developer build that you've got and there will be no Windows 11 for you. So do be careful about installing this on, so on hardware that doesn't support it because at some point between now and October, you're gonna find that it won't upgrade anymore and you're stuck on a beta build of Windows 11. And also, thanks to all the people that have told me I should switch uh, to Linux. Just wanna point out I've been using Linux since before version one of the kernel, so for at least 25 years now. So you don't need to tell me to switch to Linux. I'm talking about the machines I've got here that run Windows. I didn't mention the other machines that I have that I use on a daily basis. But thanks for thinking of me. Okay, so that's it. As I said, this is a drama and it is unfolding. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on, then maybe you should follow me on Twitter, at Gary Explains, where I might post little tidbits that I'm finding out about what Microsoft are saying. If there is a big piece of news, like a huge U-turn by Microsoft, then I will make another video. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.